Hi, everybody, and welcome to Lunchtime with Pastor Shane again. It is uh, lunchtime for Thursday, March 25th, and my, the time is flying by. We're almost to Palm Sunday and then Easter Sunday. So uh, hopefully the weather will continue to get warmer and nicer. I always love uh, Easter's where it's nice and spring, it uh, feels like spring. I have many great memories of Easter Sunday morning and getting all dressed up and standing in front of a uh, early blooming yellow rose bush and getting our pictures taken in our Easter best uh, before we went to church. And it was always uh, uh, on those days that were nice and warm and sunshiny. I remember that uh, with much love. Well, as we come together, uh, it's reminding us that this uh, is not a Bible study, although we will read scripture. It's not a prayer meeting, although we will pray together. And it's not a hymn sing, though we will read some verses from hymns. Um, We'll also read some uh, readings for reflection from other authors and theologians. But it is this time that we have carved out during the Lenten season to uh, develop that uh, spiritual discipline of alone time with God and allowing uh, His Spirit to speak to our spirits so that we can know the mind and wisdom of God. So as we start out, we're going to, of course, start out with the world's greatest collection of church jokes, some uh, corny, some amusing, and some will make you chuckle. But uh, this one's called Time's a Wasting. A minister waited in line to have his car filled with gas before a long holiday weekend. The attendant worked quickly, but there were many cars in front and in back of him. Finally, the attendant motioned him toward a vacant pump. Reverend, said the young man, sorry about the delay. It seems as if everyone waits until the last minute to get ready for a long trip. The minister chuckled. I know exactly what you mean. It's the same in my business. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully that made you chuckle a little bit. Um, we're going to uh, go to the Lord now uh, in prayer and uh, invite the Holy Spirit to be a part of our time together, since that is the main focus, is uh, getting alone uh, with the Holy Spirit and uh, hearing that still small voice. Let's pray. Lord God, as we have uh, lifted up to you each and every day, we are here once again to acknowledge that uh, you are the light and you are the life of every soul. And so you are our only source of hope. Our prayer uh, during this time is that we would hear your still small voice, that we may experience your transforming power that prepares us for every good work that you have prepared for us not just at some point in the future, not in the great by and by, not even tomorrow, but for this day, right now. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, our psalm for this week, if you remember, is Psalm uh, 56. So if you want to turn there in your Bible, uh, Psalm 56. I'm going to be reading from the new revised standard version of Psalm 56. And you'll remember that... Um, our theme for this week is uh, the wounds and sorrows of ministry. The wounds and sorrows of ministry, <clears throat> and they are many. Be gracious to me, O God, for people trample on me. All day long foes oppress me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many fight against me. O Most High, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I am not afraid. What can flesh do to me? All day long they seek to injure my cause. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They stir up strife, they lurk, they watch my steps. As they hope to have my life, so repay them for their crime. In wrath cast down the peoples, O God. You have kept count of my tossings, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your record? Then my enemies will retreat in the day when I call. This I know, that God is for me. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise. In God I trust, I am not afraid. What can a mere mortal do to me? My vows to you I must perform, O God. I will render thank offerings to you. For you have delivered my soul from death and my feet from falling so that I may walk before God in the light of life. 
with some good words as, uh, for us all, especially if we have suffered wounds uh, or hurts and sorrows uh, in our ministry and the things that God has us to do. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be reading uh, the daily scripture is actually from an Old Testament book. It's the Old Testament prophet of uh, Isaiah. And we're going to look at uh, chapter 53, verses 1 through 6. Chapter 53 of the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 through 6. I'll be reading from the New International Version. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So great uh, messianic prophecy, uh, the coming uh, sacrifice of uh, Jesus Christ is the ultimate sacrifice for us and for our sins. He bore our pain, our suffering, uh, our shame on that cross. Uh, so the reading for reflection today is, uh, I think, going to be a good one. It comes from um, The God Who Comes by Carlo Corretto. We've uh, had some stuff from him before, so he uh, speaks uh, typically in language that uh, it's easy to understand, and but at the same time is thought-provoking. So this again from Carlo Corretto from The God Who Comes. Marital, marital love is an image, however pale, of the reality which develops little by little between the absolute and the creature, between God and humankind, between Yahweh and Israel. In marital love, it is not enough to study the beloved, write poems, or receive cards from far away. Couples must marry, say yes to one another, go behind the veil of intimacy, delight in one another exultantly, become close, cultivate friendship, stay together as much as possible, coalesce their wills, make two things one, as Scripture says. But pretending to know the other just by studying him in books or photographs means remaining outside real knowledge, real mystery. Today, many persons who seek or study God do just that. They study him in books, make him an object of speculation, approach him from intellectual curiosity. With what result? The more we study, the more our ideas become confused. The more we get caught up in discussions, the farther we go from him. I think this is the nature of the crisis in the church today. It is a crisis of prayer. It is a crisis of contemplation. Study is no longer the light of spirituality. And curiosity has taken the place of humility. Self-assurance and derision of the past are the false light which guides man's pride in the labyrinth of God's unknowing, pretending to seize the truth with the strength of intelligence only. But God's truth is the same. Truth is the secret of things up there. No one and no one can know it without revelation from God. Has Christ not already said so? In the upper room, replying to the worried question put to him by Judas, not Judas Iscariot, about why he was not manifesting himself to the world, but only to his intimate friends, he replied with extreme clarity, anyone who loves me will be true to my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him 
and make our dwelling place with him. John 14, 23, one of my all-time favorite verses, the most uh, amazing verses in the Bible for me. Um, it was very comforting, very encouraging. Only love brings God's coming to us, his living presence within us, and his consequent revelation. He who obeys the commandments he has for me is the man who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. I too will love him and reveal myself to him. John 14, 21. So again, that from the God who comes by Carlo Corretto. So he's saying the same thing that I have said and said at the beginning when we started these lunch times with Pastor Shane, that the one of the, I said one of the biggest things missing in Christianity today is nobody is spending alone time with God. There are very few who have taken advantage of this, um, knew there would be. Uh, those of few of you who have, thank you so much. Uh, you are on the right road and progressing ahead in your sanctification. You are grabbing on to this, this one thing right here uh, that has been identified, not just by me, but other uh, theologians, authors, pastors, teachers, that is missing. Uh, you know, I love the, the way that he um, kind of compared this to the marital relationship. Uh, when he said in marital love, it's not enough to study the beloved. <laughs> Write poems or receive cards from far away. Couples have to marry and say yes to one another, go behind the veil of intimacy, delight in one another exultantly, become close, cultivate friendship, stay together as much as possible, coalesce their wills, make two things one, as scripture says. But pretending to know the other just by studying him in books or photographs means remaining outside real knowledge, uh, real mystery. So we, uh, we need to be seeking that same intimacy with God. And that's what this alone time is meant to do uh, for us. That is why we're doing it, to develop, create that habit, that spiritual de uh, discipline of developing this habit each and every day of uh, intimacy with God, spending alone time with him, not just uh, studying him from afar in a book, uh, but uh, we're actually uh, spending time uh, with him as uh, our spirit um, communes with his. So let's uh, move on then to our time of prayer uh, together. And uh, you can lift up, uh, allow you a few moments of silence to lift up whatever is on your heart right now, and then I'll close this out. Let's pray. Lord God, we come humbly before you once again, and we uh, all have hearts that are in different uh, places right now. And Some of us have joys that we want to lift up to you as we praise you. We want to give you all the honor and the glory and the praise that is due you. Uh, this uh, gathering uh, right now at this hour uh, today is, uh, is one way in which we do just that. We give you honor, glory, and praise, and we seek that intimacy with you and the sweetness of spending time with your Holy Spirit. Lord, some of us have come with heavy hearts and we're grieving, we're sad, we're sorrowful, we're wounded, we're bleeding. Whatever that need is, Lord, you know each and every one of us. And we know uh, that we can cast all of our cares on you because you care for each and every one of us. And so we lift up these concerns, we lift up these joys, and uh, we lift up your holy name. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Well, the hymn that we've been looking at is, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. Again, the authorship is anonymous. Uh, don't really know who wrote it. Uh, it's only three verses, so I'm just going to spend today and tomorrow uh, reading all three uh, verses. So the song as a whole goes, O Sacred Head Now Wounded, with grief and shame weighed down, now scornfully surrounded with thorns thine only crown. How pale thou art with anguish, with sore abuse and scorn. How does this visage languish, which once was bright as morn? What thou, my Lord, hast suffered was all for sinner's gain. Mine, mine was the transgression, but thine the deadly pain. Lo, here I fall, my Savior, does I deserve thy place. Look on me with thy favor, vouchsafe to me thy grace. What language shall I borrow to thank thee, dearest friend? 
For this thy dying sorrow, thy pity without end. O oh, make me thine forever, and should I fainting be, Lord, let me never, never outlive my love to thee. Amen. Well, as you go about your day today, hear this benediction. Go forth into this day with the strong name of Jesus Christ to sustain you. Amen and amen. Once again, thank you so much for joining me today. I do appreciate it. And uh, it is a blessing uh, to me and uh, hopefully a blessing to you as we spent this first 15 minutes together. And now let's go bless God and get receive a blessing from him as we spend time with him. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.